you're the devil. You will climb McRonald's food chain and rule over these humans with an iron fist. Isaac, make sure you feed her the pink can of wet food. She has a sensitive stomach. Okay. Anime has always been an outlet for all sorts of slice of life and fantasy plots to be told on screen, most of them falling into the isekai genre where the main character finds himself transported from the real world to a fantasy world filled with adventure awaiting them. But the series The Devil is a Part-Timer does the opposite of that formula by having its protagonist go from a fantasy setting to the real world of Tokyo, Japan. Originally a light novel series written by Satoshi Wagahara, Studio White Fox had decided to produce an anime adaptation after seeing the success of the novels, and in April of 2013, the sizzling series made its debut on screen. The plot of the series begins in the midst of battle between the devil himself and the hero of the world Entei Island. With the conflict quickly drawing to a close, the devil is forced to retreat between worlds and ends up finding himself in Tokyo, Japan, magicless and penniless, meaning he has to survive in this world as a lower class human if he ever wants to return to his conquest of Entei Island. Introducing fantasy based characters into a human world setting where they have to obey real life laws leads into a very refreshing take on the isekai genre and this series succeeds strongly with its memorable cast. Sadao Mao, the demon ruling and fast food working main character of this series. He's working his way up the McDonald's chain in hopes it will lead him to become powerful enough to rule the human world, and while he may be flipping burgers, he actually enjoys the work and retains his positive attitude, and as someone who's worked a fast food job before, I can safely tell you that this is completely unrealistic. More so than the angels and demons aspect of the show. Emi Yusa, the hero from Entei Island who followed Satan to the real world in hopes to destroy him, but like him, also forced to find work as she has limited magical powers in this world, but that doesn't stop her from keeping tabs on him in case he's up to no good. Shiro Ashia, loyal general to Satan who also transported to Japan in the role of caregiver in the Devil's Castle, doing all the cleaning and cooking while the Devil works, but also in charge of finding info on magic in Japan. Chiho Sasaki, the adorable yet ecstatic coworker of Mao, whom she has a giant crush on in the series. After learning about magic and the identities of Satan and Amelia, she remains the positive outlook for the group and all of the antics they find themselves in. Hanzo Ushihara, one of Satan's generals who found himself in the human world after Satan transported there, he lives the social recluse lifestyle caring only about playing games and eating junk food. Suzano Kamazuki, neighbor to Satan and member of the church seeking out to destroy the devil. Even though she struggles with the modern lifestyle of Japan, she is quite wise and proper with her mannerisms and deadly when it comes to battle. These characters deliver the charm of the series through all their comedic moments, which is one of the series' strongest assets. Seeing magical beings forced to go through the day-to-day -day life of an average minimum wage worker serves as a good ingredient for some laughs, but also makes the gags about spending money and not wasting food extra relatable for the audience as those are real concerns for part-time workers. Ashia is hands down one of the funniest characters in this series as his devotion to Mao knows no bounds as he's willing to do anything in order to help Mao's conquests, but is also the uptight sensible voice in the Devil's Castle for he'd rather eat giant amounts of food about to go bad than spend more money on fresh groceries, which can be a common thing for a low-income household. Each character brings their quirky ways to the table like that, and while some of the jokes don't quite deliver properly, 9 times out of 10 this cast is going to bring a smile to your face. While the charm of the series is the comedy, the heart that pumps the series full of life is the character development between Mao and Amelia. The devil starts out wicked and wanting to use humans to get everything he wants, but as time goes on in the human world, he starts to feel compassion and cares about the well-being of the humans that get mixed into the situations around him. He especially cares about his co-workers, friends, and even starts to care about his mortal enemy. The hero goes through even more development as she grew up hating the devil, swearing she was going to kill him to avenge her father and rid the world of his evil, but seeing him act in the human world starts to make her question everything she thought about him, to the point of even working together with him against common enemies. The show even takes it one step further as to hint that Amelia is developing feelings for Mao, but only at the end of the last episode, so we don't really get to see that element of the story extend past this small hint. Unfortunately for the series, while we did get a lot of development on the main duo, the same can't be said for some of the main cast or the setting. In the opening and even the final episode, there are shots of Chiho performing archery, but that is not mentioned at all in the show and just seems out of place because of that. 
A small nod to it in conversation when she went on her date with Mal could have made this relevant and give a little more depth to her character besides being someone who has a crush on the protagonist. The first episode started off with the climax of the battle between the Devil's Army and the Church, which works in a sense that this series is meant to be more of a comedy than a battle after battle action series, but having a lot of characters and enemies come from Entei Island with not a whole lot of information on said place they are from leaves the world feeling incomplete. Granted, most of the plot does take place in Tokyo, but besides a couple flashbacks and some conversations, we only really got to know that Entei Island deals with magical properties and the church is still hunting the devil. If we could have had more moments discussing the land or maybe even an episode where Amelia returned temporarily, it would have brought more depth to the fantasy element of the series. The plot in the series flows naturally as the magical properties seep into the real world, leading Mao to deal with both his human life and his devil life at the same time, which makes for a lot of entertaining situations in only 13 episodes, but it also leads into one of the downsides of the series. Being adapted from a light novel series that has material extending past where the last episode left off definitely shows here as a lot of the overarching story isn't close to being wrapped up. We did get a lot of plot points that had conflict and got resolved often with Mao temporarily getting his magic back, but we also got minimal story progress between the church hunting the devil and the war that's still going on. The ending we did get was nice in a way that all the characters are starting to live together in the human world, but because there's only one season, a lot of plot threads don't get tied up, which is sad because this anime deserved more than one season for its unique story and the comedy it delivered. Animation-wise, this series is very strong with its art style complementing all the gags they go for, and the battle sequence while short are very fluid for how action-packed they are. Each design is very memorable for the characters, and while the references to real-world companies such as McDonald's and KFC may not be unique, it works well with adding to the humor of the show without having to be visually striking. Seeing Mao go from an average human to a super-powered Satan who looks like he's straight out of JoJo's will make you laugh, but more so because of how well it's animated. The opening is quite stylish when using dark color schemes when showing off the fantasy aspect of the show, but shines even brighter when showing off the human world shots of the cast trying to fit into society. The small changes that happen when a new character is introduced isn't jarring to the flow of the opening, which is a nice touch as well. Music-wise, this anime has a good soundtrack going for it, but besides a couple of the tracks, not a whole lot of it sticks with you after you finish the series. Pieces often tied to the visual gags work well with leaving an impression on you, but they never push it further to make them more distinct distinct from one another. The battle music and the action scenes, however, worked excellently for the drama unfolding on screen, giving the feeling of, yeah, go get him, but also comes with the downfall of not being around long enough since the fight sequences don't last very long when they do pop up. Opening and ending-wise, the tracks are very memorable, and I would argue the best to come out of this anime as they fit the goofy tone the show is going for and showcases that you're gonna feel good watching this series. I've only seen the sub-version of this series, and I think the voice work was spot on for each character portrayed, and the delivery of the gags worked especially well because the voice work was so solid. Overall, for only one season, this series succeeds in being a comedic slice-of-life isekai show, and while it does bum me out that there are no plans for a second season, even though the story has so much more that can be adapted, the story we did get is charming and a roller coaster of comedy that should be viewed at least once, if not more, especially if you're looking for an easy-going anime to watch. I give The Devil's a Part-Timer 8 McRonald Burgers out of 10. You will find yourself smiling over this series, and maybe with enough support we could get get a season two one day. Now if you'll excuse me, my lunch break is almost up.